Chapter 11, The Paradise of Birds. When they were sailing near the island where they had spent the three days and came to the western edge of it, they saw another island almost joining it, separated only by a small channel. There was plenty of grass on it. It had groves of trees and was full of flowers. They started circling it and looking for a landing place. As they were sailing on its southern side, they found a stream flowing into the sea and there they put the boat into land. As they disembarked, St Brendan ordered them to draw the boat with ropes up along the riverbed with all their might. The width of the river was about the width of the boat. The father sat in the boat, so they carried on for about a mile until they came to the source of the stream. Then St Brendan spoke. Our Lord Jesus Christ has given us a place in which to stay during his holy resurrection. And he added, if we had no other supplies but this spring, it would, I believe, alone be enough for food and drink. Over the spring, there was a tree of extraordinary girth and no less height covered with white birds. They covered it so much that one could scarcely see its leaves or branches. When the man of God saw this, he began to think and ponder within himself what it meant. Or what was the reason that such a great multitude of birds could be all collected together? He was so tormented about this that the tears poured out and flowed down upon his cheeks and he implored God, saying, O God, who knows the unknown and reveals all that is secret, you know the distress of my heart. I implore your majesty to have pity and reveal to me, a sinner, through your great mercy, your secret that I now look upon with my eyes. I rely not on what I deserve or my worth, but rather on your boundless pity. When he said this within himself and had taken his seat again, one of the birds flew from the tree, making a noise with her wings like a handbell, and took up position on the side of the boat where the man of God was sitting. She sat on the edge of the prow and stretched her wings, as it were, as a sign of joy, and looked with a peaceful mien at the Holy Father. The man of God immediately concluded that God had listened to his plea, and he spoke to the bird. If you are God's messenger, tell me where these birds come from, or for what reason they are congregated here. She replied immediately, we survive from the great destruction of the ancient enemy, but we were not associated with them through any sin of ours. When we were created, Lucifer's fall and that of his followers brought about our destruction also. But our God is just and true. In his great judgment he sent us here. We endure no sufferings. Here we can see God's presence. But God has separated us from sharing the lot of the others who were faithful. We wander through various regions of the air and the firmament and the earth, just like the other spirits that travel on their missions. But on holy days and Sundays, we are given bodies such as you now see, so that we may stay here and praise our Creator. You and your brothers have now spent one year on your journey. Six still remain. Where you celebrated Easter today, there you will celebrate it every year. Afterwards, you will find what you cherish in your heart, that is, the promised land of the saints. And when she said this, she lifted herself off the prow and flew to the other birds. When the hour of Vespers had come, all the birds in the tree chanted, as it were, with one voice, beating their wings on their sides. A hymn is due to thee, O God in Zion, and a vow shall be paid to you in Jerusalem. They kept repeating this versicle for about the space of an hour. To the man of God and his companions, the chant and the sound of their wings seemed in its sweetness like a rhythmical song. 
Then St. Brendan said to his brothers, Repair your bodies, for today our souls are filled with divine food. When supper was over, they performed the divine service. When all was finished, the man of God and his companions gave repose to their bodies until midnight. Waking, the man of God aroused his brothers for the vigil of the holy night, beginning with the versicle, Lord, open my lips. When the holy man had finished, all the birds responded with wing and mouth, saying, Praise the Lord, all his angels, praise him, all his powers. So it was for Vespers. They chanted all the time for the space of an hour. When dawn rose, they chanted, May the radiance of the Lord our God be upon us. With the same tune and for the same length of time as at Matins and Lords, likewise at Terse they chanted the versicle, Sing praises to our God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises in wisdom. At Sext they chanted, Shine your countenance, Lord, upon us and have mercy on us. And at Nones they chanted, How good and pleasant it is that brothers live together as one. In this way, day and night the birds gave praise to the Lord. And so St. Brendan refreshed his brothers with the feast of Easter until the octave day. When the days of the octave were over, he said, Let us take supplies from the spring. Until now we had no need of water except to wash our hands and feet. And when he said this, the man with whom they had previously spent the three days before Easter, and who had given them food for the feast of Easter, came to them in his boat, which was full of food and drink. He took all of this out of the boat, stood before the Holy Father and said, Men, brothers, here you have enough until the holy day of Pentecost. Do not drink from the spring here. It is strong to drink. I shall tell you what kind it is. If a man drinks it, sleep will overpower him and he will not awaken for 24 hours. It is only when it is outside of the spring that it has the taste and quality of water. When he had received the Holy Father's blessing, he returned to his own place. St. Brendan remained where he was until the beginning of the octave of Pentecost, for the chanting of the birds revived their spirits. On Pentecost, however, when the man of God had sung Mass with his brothers, their steward came, bringing with him whatever was necessary for the celebration of the feast day. When they had sat down together for the meal, the steward spoke to them, saying, You have a long journey ahead of you. Take the full of your vessels from the spring here, and dry bread, which you can keep until next year, I shall give you as much as your boat can carry. And when all this had been finished, he received the Holy Father's blessing, and returned to his own place. After eight days, St. Brendan had the boat loaded with all the things the steward had brought to him, and had all the vessels filled from the spring. And when all was assembled at the shore, the same bird with speedy flight came and sat on the prow of the boat. The man of God understood that she wanted to tell him something. Then, in a human voice, she said, Next year, you will celebrate with us the holy day of Easter and the time you have just spent with us. And where you were this year on Maundy Thursday, there you will be next year on that day. Similarly, you will celebrate the vigil of Easter Sunday, where you formally celebrated it, on the back of Jasconius. After eight months, you will also find an island, which is called the Island of the Community of Aylby. And there you will celebrate Christmas Day. When she had said this, she returned to her own place. The brothers stretched the sail and steered out into the ocean, while the birds chanted as it were with one voice, Hear us, God our Saviour, our hope throughout all the boundaries of the earth and in the distant sea. Chapter 12 the community of Aylby. 
Then the Holy Father, with his group, was driven here and there for three months over the space of the ocean. They could see nothing but sky and sea. They ate always every second or third day. One day there appeared to them an island not far away. When they were approaching the shore, the wind drew them away from landing. They therefore had to circle the island for 40 days, and still they could not find a landing place. The brothers in the boat implored God with tears to give them help. Their strength had almost failed because of their utter exhaustion. When they had persevered for three days in frequent prayer and abstinence, a narrow landing place appeared to them, just wide enough to take one boat only. And there appeared before them there also two wells, one muddy, the other clear. The brothers then rushed with their vessels to drink the water. The man of God watching them said, My sons, do not do a forbidden thing, that is, something without permission of the elders who live in this island. They will freely give you the water that you now want to drink in stealth. When they disembarked and were wondering in which direction they should go, an elder of great gravity met them. His hair was snow white and his face was shining. He prostrated himself three times on the ground before embracing the man of God. But St. Brendan and those with him raised him from the ground. As they embraced one another, the elder held the hand of the Holy Father and went along with him the distance of about 200 yards to a monastery. St. Brendan stood with his brothers before the gate of the monastery and asked the elder, Whose monastery is this? Who is in charge of it? Where do the inhabitants come from? The Holy Father kept questioning the elder in various ways, but he could not get one answer of him. He only indicated with his hand, with incredible meekness, that they should be silent. As soon as the Holy Father realized that this was a rule of the place, he spoke to his brothers, saying, Keep your mouths from speaking, lest these brothers be defiled by your garrulousness. And at this remonstrance, eleven brothers came to meet them with reliquaries, crosses and hymns, chanting the versicle, Rise, saints of God, from your dwellings and go to meet truth. Sanctify the place, Bless the people and graciously keep us, your servants, in peace. When the versicle was finished, the father of the monastery embraced St. Brendan and his companions in order. In the same way, his community embraced the companions of the holy man. When they had exchanged the kiss of peace, they led them to the monastery, as the custom is in western parts, to conduct brothers in this way with prayers. Afterwards, the abbot of the monastery, with his monks, washed the feet of the guests and chanted the antiphon, a new commandment. When this was done, the abbot led them in great silence to the refectory. A signal was sounded, hands were washed, and then the abbot made them sit down. When a second signal sounded, one of the brothers of the father of the monastery got up and served the table with loaves of extraordinary whiteness and some roots of extraordinary sweetness. The brothers sat mixed with the guests in order. There was a full loaf between every two brothers. The same server on the sounding of the signal gave the brothers drink. The abbot for his part was urging on the brothers saying with great glee, in joy and fear of the Lord, drink in love now, water from the well from which you wanted to drink in stealth today. The feet of the brothers are washed every day from the other muddy well that you saw, because it is always warm. We have no idea where the loaves that you see are baked or who carries them to our larder. What we do know is that they are given to his servants from the great charity of God by means of some dependent creature. There are 24 of us brothers here. 
Every day we have 12 loaves for our food, a loaf between every two. On feast days and Sundays, God increases the supply to one full loaf for each brother, so that they can have supper from what is left over. Just now on your coming, we have a double supply. Thus, Christ feeds us from the time of St. Patrick and St. Aylby, our Father, for 80 years until now. Yet neither sign of old age nor weakness spreads in our limbs. On this island we need nothing to eat that is prepared by fire. Neither cold nor heat ever overcomes us. And when the time comes for masses or vigils, we light in our church the lights that we brought with us from our homeland under divine predestination. They burn till day and still none of them is reduced in any way. After they had drunk three times, the abbot sounded a signal in the usual way. The brothers rose all together in great silence and gravity from the table and preceded the Holy Fathers to the church. Behind them walked St. Brendan and the father of the monastery. As they entered the church, twelve other brothers, genuflecting quickly, met them on their way out. When St. Brendan saw them, he said, Abbot, why did these not eat along with us? The father replied, Because of you, our table could not hold us all together at one sitting. They will now eat and will miss nothing. Let us now, however, go into the church and sing vespers so that our brothers, who are eating now, will be able to sing vespers after us in good time. When they had finished the office of vespers, St. Brendan examined how the church was built. It was square, of the same length as breadths, and had seven lights, three before the altar, which was in the middle, and two each before the other two altars. The altars were made of crystal, cut in a square, and likewise all the vessels were of crystal, namely patterns, chalices and cruets and other vessels required for the divine cult. There were 24 seats in a circle in the church. The abbot, however, sat between the two choirs. One group began from him and ended with him, and it was likewise with the other. No one on either side presumed to intone a verse but the abbot. No one in the monastery spoke or made any sound. If a brother needed anything, he went before the abbot, knelt facing him, and requested within his heart what he needed. Thereupon the Holy Father, taking a tablet and stylus, wrote as God revealed to him, and gave it to the brother who asked his advice. While St. Brendan was reflecting upon all these matters within himself, the abbot spoke to him. Father, it is now time to return to the refectory, so that all that we have to do will be done while there is light. This they did in the same way as before. And when they had completed the day's course in order, they all hurried with great eagerness to Compline. When the abbot had intoned the versicle, God, come to my aid, and they had together given honour to the Trinity, they began to chant the versicle, We have acted wrongly, we have done iniquity. You, Lord, who are our faithful Father, spare us. I shall sleep in peace, therefore, and shall take my rest. For you, Lord, have placed me singularly in hope. After that they chanted the office of the hour. And when the order of psalms had been completed, all went out of the church, the brothers bringing their guests, each to his cell with them. But the abbot and St. Brendan remained seated in the church to wait for the coming of the light. St. Brendan questioned the Holy Father on their silence and their community life. How could human flesh endure such a life? The Father replied with great reverence and humility, Abbot, I confess before my Christ, it is eighty years since we came to this island. We have heard no human voice except when singing praise to God. Among the twenty-four of us no voice is raised except by way of a signal given by a finger or the eyes, and that only by the elders. None of us has suffered ill in the flesh or from the spirits that infest the human race since we came here. St. Brendan said, 
May we stay here now or not? He replied, You may not, because it is not the will of God. Why do you ask me, Father? Has not God revealed to you before you came here to us what you must do? You must return to your own place with 14 of your brothers. There God has prepared your burial place. Of the two remaining brothers, one will stay abroad in the island of the Anchorites and the other will be condemned by a shameful death to hell. While they were thus conversing, a fiery arrow sped through a window before their very eyes and lit all the lamps that were placed before the altars. Then the arrow immediately sped out again, but a bright light was left in the lamps. St. Brendan again asked, Who will quench the lights in the morning? The Holy Father replied, Come and see the secret of it. You can see the tapers burning in the centre of the bowls. Nothing of them actually burns away so that they might get smaller or reduced in size, nor is there any deposit left in the morning. The light is spiritual. St. Brendan asked, How can an incorporeal light burn corporeally in a corporeal creature? The elder replied, Have you not read of the bush burning at Mount Sinai? Yet that bush was unaffected by the fire. They kept vigil the whole night until morning. Then St. Brendan asked leave to set out on his journey. The elder said to him, No, Father, you must celebrate Christmas with us until the octave of the Epiphany. The Holy Father, therefore, with his company, stayed that time with the twenty-four fathers in the island of the community of Aylby. Chapter 13 The Soporific Well When the feast days were over, the blessed Brendan and his followers brought provisions into the boat and received the blessing of the holy men. He then sailed out to the ocean as fast as he could. Whether by rowing or sailing, the boat was carried to many different places until the beginning of Lent. One day they saw an island not far in front of them. When the brothers saw it, they began to row eagerly, because they were then very distressed from hunger and thirst. Their food and drink had failed three days before. When the Holy Father had blessed the landing place, and all had disembarked from the boat, they found a clear well, a variety of plants and roots in a circle around the well, and various kinds of fish swimming along the riverbed into the sea. St. Brendan said to his brothers, God has given us here a comfort after our toil. Gather the plants and roots which the Lord has prepared for his servants. So they did. When they poured out the water to drink it, however, The man of God said to them, Brothers, take care that you do not use too much of these waters, lest they lie heavily upon your bodies. The brothers interpreted the prescription of the man of God in different ways. Some of them drank one cup, others two, and the rest three. The last were overcome by a sleep of three days and three nights the remainder by a sleep of a day and a night. But the Holy Father prayed unceasingly to God for his brothers because through their ignorance such a danger had come upon them. When the three days sleeping were up, the Holy Father spoke to his companions, Brothers, let us flee from this threat to our lives, lest something worse happen to us. The Lord gave us sustenance, but you did yourself damage with it. Leave this island, then, taking provisions from the fish, and prepare what you need for a meal every third day up to Maundy Thursday. Likewise for the water, a single cup for each brother each day, and equally for the roots. When they had loaded the boat with all that the man of God had ordered, they set sail and made out to sea in a northerly direction. Chapter 14 The Coagulated Sea After three days and three nights, the wind dropped. 
and the sea coagulated, as it were. It was so smooth. The Holy Father said, ship the oars and loosen the sail. Wherever God wants to direct the boat, let him direct it. The boat therefore was carried around for 20 days. Afterwards God raised a wind favourable to them again from west to east. They then set sail out to sea and sped on. They ate always every third day. Chapter 15 The Island of Sheep, Jasconius, and the Paradise of Birds again. One day, an island that looked like a cloud appeared to them a long distance away. St. Brendan said, My sons, do you recognise that island? They said, No, not at all. He said, I recognise it. That is the island where we were last year on Maundy Thursday. That is where our good steward lives. The brothers began to row for joy as fast as their strength could support. When the man of God saw this, he said, Children, do not tire your limbs foolishly. Is not the all-powerful God the pilot and sailor of our boat? Leave it to him. He himself guides our journey just as he wills. When they came near that island, the same steward came to meet them in a boat and led them to the landing place where they had disembarked the previous year. He praised God and embraced the feet of every one of them, beginning from the Holy Father right down to the last, saying, God is wonderful in his saints. The God of Israel will himself give valour and strength to his people. Blessed be God. When the versicle was over and everything had been taken from the boat, the steward pitched a tent and made ready a bath, for it was Maundy Thursday, clothed all the brothers with new garments, served them for three days. The brothers, for their part, celebrated the Passion of the Lord with great attention until Holy Saturday. When the services for Holy Saturday were completed, spiritual victims sacrificed and supper taken, the steward said to St. Brendan and those that were with him, Go and embark in the boat so that you may celebrate the vigil of the Holy Sunday of the Resurrection where you celebrated it last year, and celebrate the Sunday itself until midday in the same way. Afterwards, steer for the island which is called the Paradise of Birds where you were last year from Easter until the Octave of Pentecost, and bring with you all the food and drink that are necessary. I shall come to see you on the Sunday after Easter. So they did. The steward loaded the boat with loaves and drink and flesh and other good things, as much as it could take. St. Brendan gave a blessing and embarked. They set sail immediately for the other island. When they came near the spot where they should disembark from the boat, they saw the pot which they had left behind the year before. Then St. Brendan, disembarking from the boat with his brothers, chanted the hymn of the three children right to the end. And when the hymn was finished, the man of God warned his brothers, saying, My sons, watch and pray that you do not enter into temptation. Reflect on how God has subjected the savage beast under us without any inconvenience to us. The brothers therefore spent the vigil scattered over the island until matins. From then until about nine o'clock, each of the priests offered Mass. Then the blessed Brendan sacrificed the spotless lamb to God and said to his brothers, Last year I celebrated the resurrection of the Lord here. I wish to do the same this year. They then set out for the island of the birds. As they came near the landing place they had chosen on that island, all the birds chanted as if with one voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. And again, the Lord God has given us light. Appoint a holy day with festal branches up to the horn of the altar. Thus they chanted and beat their wings for a long time, for about half an hour, until the Holy Father and his holy companions and the contents of the boat were landed and the Holy Father had taken his place in his tent. 
when he had celebrated there with his community the feasts of Easter, the steward came to them, as he had told them beforehand, on Sunday the octave of Easter, bringing with him all the food needed for human life. When they sat down to table, the same bird again sat on the prow of the boat, stretching her wings and making a noise like the sound of a great organ. The man of God then realized that she wished to convey a message to him. The bird said, God has ordained for you four points of call for four periods of the year until the seven years of your pilgrimage are over. Namely, on Maundy Thursday, with your steward who is present every year, Easter, you will celebrate on the back of the whale, the Easter feasts, until the octave of Pentecost with us. Christmas you will celebrate with the community of Aylby. Then after seven years and great and varied trials you will find the promised land of the saints that you seek. There you will live for 40 days and afterwards God will bring you back to the land of your birth. When the Holy Father heard this he prostrated himself on the ground with his brothers giving thanks and praise to his Creator. When the Venerable Elder had finished this, the bird returned to her own place. When they had finished eating, the steward said, With God's help, I shall return to you with your provisions on the feast of the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the Apostles. Having received the blessing of the Holy Father and all that were with him, he returned to his own place. The Venerable Father remained there the number of days indicated. When the feast days were over, St. Brendan ordered his brothers to prepare to sail and fill the vessels from the well. They brought the boat to the sea, while the steward came with his own boat laden with food for the brothers. When he had placed all in the boat of the holy man, he embraced all of them, and then returned where he had come from. Chapter 16 the devouring beast. The Venerable Father and his companions sailed out into the ocean and their boat was carried along for 40 days. One day there appeared to them a beast of immense size following them at a distance. He spouted foam from his nostrils, ploughed through the waves at a great speed as if he were about to devour them. When the brothers saw this, they called upon the Lord, saying, Deliver us, Lord, so that that beast does not devour us. St. Brendan comforted them, saying, Do not be afraid. You have little faith. God, who always defends us, will deliver us from the mouth of this beast and from other dangers. As the beast came near them, he caused waves of extraordinary height to go before him, right up to the boat so that the brothers were more and more afraid. The Venerable Elder also raised his hands to heaven and said, Lord, deliver your servants as you delivered David from the hand of Goliath, the giant. Lord, deliver us as you delivered Jonas from the belly of the whale. After these three pleas asking for deliverance, a mighty monster passed near them from the west going to encounter the beast. He immediately attacked him, emitting fire from his mouth. The elder spoke to his brothers, Look, my sons, at the great deeds of our Saviour. See how the beasts obey their Creator. Wait presently for the outcome of this affair. This battle will do us no damage. It will redound to the glory of God. When he had said this, the wretched beasts that pursued the servants of Christ was cut into three pieces before their eyes. The other returned after his victory to where he had come from. Another day they saw at a distance a very large island full of trees. While they were drawing near to its shore and disembarking from the boat, they saw the end portion of the beasts that had been slain. St. Brendan said, See, what wished to devour you, you shall now devour it. You will stay a long while in this island. Take your boat, therefore, out of the water, high up on the land, and look for a place in the wood where your tent can stand. The Holy Father himself determined the spot where they were to stay. 
When they had carried out the order of the man of God and had put all the utensils in the tent, St. Brendan said to his brothers, Take your provisions from that beast, enough for three months, for tonight its flesh will be devoured by beasts. They were engaged until Vespers in carrying up as much flesh from the shore as they required, in accordance with the instructions of the Holy Father. But when the brothers had done all this, they said, Abbot, how can we live here without water? He answered them, Is it more difficult for God to give you water than food? But go to the southern part of the island and you will find a clear well and many plants and roots. Bring me the proper amount of supplies from there. They found everything, as the man of God had foretold. St. Brendan, therefore, remained three months because there was a storm at sea and a strong wind and variable weather with rain and hail. The brothers went to see what the man of God had said about the beast. When they came to the place where the body was before, they found nothing but bones. They hurried back to the man of God and said, Abbot, it is as you said. He replied to them, I know, my sons, that you wanted to test me to see if I spoke the truth or not. I shall tell you another sign. A portion of a fish will come there tonight, and tomorrow you will eat of it. And on the following day, indeed, the brothers went out to the place, and they found, as the man of God had said, they brought back as much as they could carry. The venerable father said to them, Keep it and preserve it carefully with salt. You will have need of it, for God will make the weather fine today, tomorrow and after tomorrow. The swell of the sea and the waves will fall. Then you will leave this place. When these days were over, St. Brendan ordered his brothers to load the boat, to fill the containers and other vessels and collect plants and roots for his own use. For the father, from the time of his ordination to the priesthood, tasted nothing in which the spirit of life drew support from flesh. When all was loaded into the boat, they raised the sail and set off in a northerly direction. Chapter 17 The Island of the Three Choirs or Anchorites A Latecomer Stays One day, they saw an island a long distance away from them. St. Brendan said, Do you see that island? They replied, We do. He said to them, Three choirs of people are in that island, one of boys, another of youths, a third of elders, and one of your brothers will remain on pilgrimage there. The brothers asked him which of them it was. As they were preoccupied with the thought and he saw that they were sad, he said, there is the brother who will remain here. The brother indicated was one of the three who had followed after St. Brendan from his monastery. When they were embarking in the boat in their fatherland, he had spoken of their future. They approached the island until the boat put in at the shore. The island was extraordinarily flat, so much so that it seemed to them to be level with the sea. It had no trees or anything that would move with the wind. It was very spacious and covered with white and purple fruit. There they saw the three choirs, as the man of God had foretold. The space between one choir and another was about the throw of a stone from a sling. They moved continuously here and there, one choir, however, at a time, standing in one place and chanting, the saints will go from strength to strength and they will see the God of gods in Zion. While one choir finished this versicle, another choir stood and began to chant the same song, and this they did without any intermission. The first choir was made up of boys in white garments, the second choir was clothed in blue garments, the third in purple dalmatics. It was ten o'clock when they put in at the landing place on the island. When midday came, all the choirs began to chant together, singing, May God be merciful to us to the end of the psalm, and be pleased, O God, to deliver me, and likewise the third of the psalms for sext, I kept my faith, and the prayer for mercy as above. Likewise at three o'clock they chanted another three psalms out of the depths, and behold how good 
and praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. At Vespers they chanted, A hymn is due to thee, O God in Zion, and bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God. And the third of the Psalms for Vespers, praise the Lord, children. They then chanted while seated the gradual Psalms. When they had finished this chant, a cloud of extraordinary brightness covered the island, but now they could no longer see what they had seen because of the denseness of the cloud. Nevertheless, they continued to hear the voices of those singing their ordinary chant without interruption until matins. Then the choirs began to chant, singing, Praise the Lord from the heavens, then sing to the Lord, and the third of the Psalms of Matins, Praise the Lord in his saints. After that they chanted twelve psalms in the order of the Psalter. When day dawned, the island was cloudless, and immediately they chanted the three psalms, Have mercy on me, O God. God, my God, from the dawn I keep watch for thee, and Lord, my refuge. At Terse they chanted another three psalms, that is, All peoples, and God in your name, and the third, I have loved because, with the Alleluia. Then they offered up the spotless lamb, and all came to communion, saying, Take this holy body of the Lord and blood of the Saviour for everlasting life. When the sacrifice was over, two members of the choir of youths carried a basket full of purple fruit and placed it in the boat, saying, Accept fruit from the island of strong men. Give us our brother and set forth in peace. Then St. Brendan called the brother to him and said, Embrace your brothers and go with those who summon you. It was a good hour that your mother conceived you, seeing that you have deserved to live with such a community. And when he had embraced all, including the Holy Father, St. Brendan said to him, Son, remember the great favours God conferred on you in this life. Go and pray for us. And he immediately followed the two youths to their school. The Venerable Father and his companions set sail. When it was three o'clock, he ordered his brothers to refresh their bodies with the fruit of the island of strong men. As he said this, the man of God took one of them. When he saw its size and that it was full of juice, he expressed wonder and said, I have never seen or gathered fruit of such size. They were all of equal size and like a large ball. The man of God then asked that a vessel be brought to him. He squeezed one of the fruits and got a pound of juice from it, which he divided into twelve ounces. The Holy Father gave an ounce of the juice to each of the brothers. One fruit, therefore, fed one brother for twelve days, so that he always had in his mouth the taste of honey. Chapter 18. The Island of Grapes After some days, the Holy Father prescribed a fast for three days. Then, when the three days were over, a great bird was seen flying near the boat, carrying a branch of an unknown tree. At the tip of the branch was a cluster of grapes of extraordinary redness. The bird dropped this cluster from its beak into the saint's lap. Then St. Brendan called the attention of his brothers and said, Look at the meal God has sent you. Take it. The grapes of this cluster were as big as apples. The man of God divided them, one each among his brothers, and so they had food until the twelfth day. Again the man of God renewed with his brothers the same fast for three days. Now on the third day they saw an island not far from them, covered completely with densely planted trees, bearing the same crop of grapes of such incredible fertility that all the trees were bent down to the ground with the same fruit of the same colour. No tree was barren, nor was there a tree of any other kind in the island. The brothers then put into harbour. The man of God disembarked and began to walk round the island. It had a perfume like that of a house filled with pomegranates. Meanwhile the brothers were waiting in the boat until the man of God should return to them. All the while the breeze bore in on them a sweet perfume so that they were tempted to be heedless of their fasts. The Venerable Father, 
found six copious wells full of flourishing plants and roots of many kinds. He then returned to his brothers, carrying with him some of the first fruits of the island, and said to them, Disembark, pitch your tent, and refresh yourselves with the good fruits of this land that the Lord has shown us. And so for forty days they fed on the grapes and on the plants and roots of the wells, but at the end of that time they embarked, bringing with them as much of the fruits as their boats could carry. Chapter 19. The Griffin. When they had gone on board, the boat's sail was hoisted to steer where the wind directed. After they had sailed, the bird called the Griffin appeared to them, flying from far away towards them. When his brothers saw it, they started saying to the Holy Father, That beast has come to devour us. The man of God said to them, Do not be afraid. God is our helper. He will defend us on this occasion too. The bird stretched her talons to seize the servants of God. Just then, suddenly, the bird which on the earlier occasion brought them the branch with the fruits flew swiftly up to the griffin, which immediately made to devour her. But that bird defended herself until she overcame and tore out the eyes of the griffin. The griffin then flew high up into the sky so that the brothers could scarcely see her. But her killer pursued her until she killed her, for the griffin's body fell into the sea near the boat before the eyes of the brothers. The other bird returned to her own place. Chapter 20 The Community of Aylby again Not many days afterwards, St Brendan and his sailors <coughs> caught sight of the island of the community of Aylby. There he celebrated Christmas with his brothers. And when the feast days were over, the Venerable Father received the blessing of the abbot and his community, and then sailed round the ocean for a long time, except for the feast mentioned, that is Easter and Christmas, for during them he rested in the place mentioned.